Hey, welcome back to James's Repair Shop. This is going to be for episode four. Um, I went ahead and did a, a couple things. My OCD kicked in and I started stripping the uh, purple, red, and gold paint off of the uh, inner, under the um, engine bay of this car. I don't know why I did, but I just wanted to see how it looked like it was all white. This car was a white car. I have a couple questions. I have had a couple of questions on what color the car was originally. It is a Wimbledon white uh, color. So in episode, uh, this episode, episode four, <clears throat> I'll be going, continuing on with the cleanup and explaining and explaining what I use on the cleanup. It's very simple. It's not a hard one. Um, I also go over the removal of the windshield wiper motor. I've never done that before on this car, so be easy on me in the comments. <laughs> uh, if you see it, maybe it's not done the right way or whatever. Uh, I've done it. Also, <clears throat> I've taken off the uh, shock tower caps, but I'm gonna save all that part of it to tie it into an episode with removing the springs and the control arms and steering box and all the running gear. I've been finding uh, videos are getting a little long and I, viewership is like only 50% of the time of the video I make. So try to get it back down a little bit so, I, so in this video, like I said, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll be uh, continuing cleanup of the engine bay, getting rid of that old uh, mist, uh, added paint that, I don't know, it is what it is. Uh, easy to do, so I'm gonna do it. It also get, helps get rid of the grease and oils. Anyway, I'm talking about trying to get the video shorter here I am rambling on so anyway uh, let's get on with it I'll spin you around and uh, or I'll bring you in on the car actually and we'll get back on uh, cleaning the old paint off oh yeah before I get uh, too far ahead uh, George asked if I could post the uh, door tag on this the body tag so here it is George um, like I said in my reply on uh, the video it, it was a white exterior Wimbledon white white interior and I believe white vinyl seats, not leather. Uh, and it had a white vinyl top, so, or a white uh, convertible top. So it was a tri-white car. Thanks for asking the question, George. All right, here we are. This is what I've done. I did last night, late, uh, much to my wife's dismay. I was out here fooling around with this. I cleaned uh, pretty much all of the purple, red, and gold paint off of the the cowling area, the, the driver's side, inner fender, and all the stuff. And uh, still, of course, I still have a few things to take off there, but that won't be done in this video. And I moved ahead and I did half, pretty much half of the engine bay, clean off that mismatch, mismatch paint. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, you can, it revealed, you can see a lot of work was done here that needs to be fixed up as well. A lot of brass welding. It is what it is we'll fix it up uh, fortunately they didn't cut away all the old stuff so I'll be able to duplicate all this make it myself so that's good so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna continue on cleaning right around and I'll do it in uh, time-lapse so I'll uh, <laughs> so you guys won't be bored great right to death it'll be done fairly quick for you guys and what I use is this uh, it's just a uh, like a plastic bristle brush, not a metal bristle brush. And a rag, of course. And I just use acetone, or uh, lacquer thinner. Um, the lacquer thinner doesn't seem to be uh, attacking the white paint at all, but it does go after the red and the purple really well, except up on the, on the front here. This red was locked down pretty good, but it doesn't look like this. You can see in here, getting close. It doesn't look like when any of the paints were were applied that they sanded anything. So that that's an advantage for me that they didn't sand it. And you can see in here as well, if they sanded it, it was very minimal. So that means the paint wasn't really adhering to the uh, white paint. And they just stacked paint on top of paint. So the first layer that was put down, which I think might've been purple, is the one that, uh, it actually comes off fairly easy. So. Uh, except for a couple spots here where it was probably scratched in 
and it's built it's right in the white paint so I couldn't get it out I didn't want to I mean I got to sand all this anyway but I want it to be uh, I just want to start with what it is now this blue paint up here I <laughs> I really don't know how to explain it it's on there it's above the purple paint it's above the I don't even know if it's above the gold paint I think it's above the purple I'm not sure yeah it's above the I don't know I don't even know I didn't see there's well it's hard to tell why that blue paints there anyway let's get on this area and get it cleaned up and we'll make this place look good get the old lacquer thinner going I'm gonna open the doors in the garage because this is a uh, pretty humy stuff let the air blow through and uh, ventilate the place Well, there you go, people. I don't know what you think of it, but I think it's quite a significant change. I did miss some over there. I'll get that after. And there's some up there. But that's all going to be welded on and redone that whole ridge, so I didn't put a lot of effort into it. And I still have to take the battery tray out. I keep forgetting to do that. Well, that's, a, to me, a significant change to what it was. <clears throat> up in here... This stuff is being difficult, so I like to end up just sanding it out. This is factory, it looks like. Possibly there was some silver uh, backlay in this by the factory. I'm going to have to check on that. Maybe Nick, Vintage Thunderbird Repair, knows. Uh, maybe if he's watching my videos, he'll respond. If not, maybe I'll shoot him a message. It's not that important right now because I'm a long way from doing any paint work up here. This is just to get the grease out of the way. So... Uh, I'm not tracking it all over the vehicle every time you touch something with grease on your hands. <clears throat> I don't really like that. Um, that I, you'll see part way through I got a bucket of water with some LA Totally Awesome Cleaner and I said before in one of my videos it's not a perfect, uh, it's not a real good grease remover even though that's what they advertise it as. It does wonders on, on rubbers, uh, uh, no, on rubber products, perfect for that. So I think I'm going to pick up some uh, some super clean. I really like the super clean stuff. I've had it before and it worked really well for uh, taking grease off. Now, you want to go down a rabbit hole. Um, my preferred way is gasoline, but I, I'm not going to point anyone down that direction. That's just my preference. And it has to be, of course, handled with extreme caution while using it open like this. But anyway, that's just what I feel. And I was looking at these M's. I called them M's. But I wonder if when they were putting them on. Now, if anybody knows, help me out here. If they were putting them on, that they were leaning over like I am and put W for Wimbledon. I don't know. Just a question. Anybody knows, let me know. But yeah, here we are. So now, uh, the remainder of this video is going to be taking that uh, wiper motor out so hang in there and you'll see how I do it and again like I said earlier go easy on me I've never done that before so I did the best I could at the time okay uh, here's something a point of interest that uh, may come in helpful to anybody that's working on these and don't it doesn't have that doesn't have all the engine hood off and everything but we're able to take the cowl off the cowl cover uh, for the windshield wiper motor um, because if you're working you know uh, restricted uh, maybe this will help so what you have here I'll start out with what goes on I'm holding on to the camera at the same time so you have these two bars there's six screws so there's two bars that go up underneath 
and I've moved them around so I'm not sure if they're gonna line up. Yeah, they are. So there's two bars like that underneath, one on each side, like that. And then there's the cover. So I moved some stuff. I wasn't really ready. I should have waited. And then there's the cover that goes over top of all that. And then those bars would be underneath. Like so. And the screws would go into the bars through the, through the frame. So that's pretty much a quick rundown of that. So like this, so six, screw, six bolts rather. And I believe there's seven sixteenths, but let me just check. Uh, I think there's, no, they're, uh, oh yeah, okay. yeah, seven sixteenths. <clears throat> so that's seven sixteenths, six bolts, two bars out of here, remove the plate, put the bolts in the plate over here so I don't lose them, because I'm going to bag and tag them, and the plates with them over here, and then you have this uh, arm clip. So these just pop up and they slide off. Now I already have loosened this. You may be trying to do this in the car, that's why I'm showing this piece. And if you're trying to do this in the car, at least you have an idea of what's going on in there. So there's a clip there that pops up. I can't do it with one hand. And there's another one. There's a bolt. Oh, actually, where's the other arm? I'll have to get the other arm up out of there first before I can show you. So hold on. Okay, back on the wiper motor. Uh, I couldn't get the arm off of uh, this. It's, it seems to be stuck on. I took the clip off. And here's the clip, that's the type of clip, pretty common clip for that type. But the arm seems to be seized in there. But rather than monkey with it in the hole, I, I put a, I moved the motor forward, one set of holes. You'll see there's the back holes. Move, put, a, put a punch in there and a screwdriver on the other side. And I was able to undo, I'm able to undo the uh, screws by reaching underneath. The bolts holding in, they are, I believe they're half inch, yeah, they're half inch. I had to put a little licamatazzi on them, but they're freed up now, so I'll get them out. And then here's the, the cable that goes into the dash that hooks to this lever here that activates your wiper when you pull, pull or push on the upper that flight controls up in the dash. So that's the uh, wiper motor. It's called a Hydro Whip. Interesting name. So I'll get it out and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all out. Okay, there's the old Hydro Whip uh, disconnected. I had, I found, I can see it or not, if you had the arm, I got this arm off finally. I thought it was stuck on, it was stuck on there. Put a little licamatazzi on it and she popped off. And I found that uh, to get the left arm off, you, only, you need it in this, in the center position like that. Otherwise the arm won't pop off the pin. And that clip, I had to move it all the way to the left on the left arm to get that to get a hold of that clip here and then I moved it back centered and you're gonna lose oil because well I did because the mine's all unhooked but if yours is in the car you probably won't but uh, if there's any pressure on it it might be trouble but that's it for that I'll pop this out of here and see if we can uh, see what's going on all right give me a second and I'll get her back up and we'll have a look at it okay there's the old hydro whip out windshield wiper motor and I'll just get that um, I was able to get it out with this whole hose on. It may be easier just to uh, disconnect that. But these arms are going to have to come off for sure to get it up out of the hole. And that's it. That's the whole assembly. Let's flip it over and have a look. So it just right. There's the bracket that holds it in place. I'll get back enough so you can see it. I've never had one of these apart before, so this is all new to me. It's all learning. That's why I'm doing this. So that's pretty much the uh, windshield wiper motor, the hydraulic windshield wiper motor on one of these Thunderbirds. Let me get the cable off before I damage it. Oh, start moping around everywhere. And I'm not gonna be able to do that with one hand. So, all right, let me get back to you on that. Okay, I got the cable off. It's just, uh, where are we in this, show it to you. Just goes up behind this uh, screw, there's a slot there. It sits in the slot and I, it's adjustable, so I suspect that would have to be adjusted too. And then, then just slides out of the end of the out of the end of the arm. 
And that's it. That's off. Uh, I'm going to thread this back in so I don't lose it. I'll do that in a minute. And I'll bag and tag this thing. Okay, there's the left arm, or right arm rather off. So there is a, like a chrome plated or stainless, I'm not sure what it is, it's pretty dirty, uh, ring. And then there's the nut with the slots on it. There's no uh, wrench provision on these, so you gotta, this one come off easy. I had to put a little of my uh, licomatazzi on it. Uh, deep creep, penetrating fluid. And then there were the two bolts, 7 16 bolts here. So I just put them back in so I'll keep them all in one spot. I had to, just a little tip on this one, it felt like it wouldn't come out. I had to put this bolt back in and just tap down on it to pop it off of the underneath. It must have uh, been bonded on pretty good. Anyway, the other side will be very similar, I'm sure. So I won't bother boring you with that. But that's the right arm. I'm just soaking out the the, the left arm with some uh, deep creep because that one was not cooperating quite as easily. Okay, I was able to get the uh, left side uh, wiper arm pedestal off. Uh, I just used a let's see around where you can see it. I just used a pry bar in like this and I tapped on it with a hammer and I had to do go a little bit of forward motion but then it just really once it got started just some twisting like that was good enough but only after it got started. Anyway, now it's off enough that we can spin it off by hand. And it didn't uh, appear to damage the slots. That's good. There should be, there's probably a tool for that. I don't have it. If I do, I don't know where it is. I've got a lot of tools and no idea where half of them are. If you don't use them every day, they get tucked away and then you kind of lose track of them. Probably way too many more than I need because I end up not using them anyway. Anyway, I'll get the, these two bolts out and we'll get that one off and that'll be it for the wiper. We'll be out of there. Okay, there we go. That's the uh, <clears throat> episode four. Uh, hey, before I go, I remembered to take the battery tray out. I think I was uh, avoiding it because I was worried what I would find underneath. It's the usual. I'll, have, I'll, get, I'll bring you in and have a look at it in a second. Anyway, and I hope you enjoyed taking the windshield wiper motor out. These weren't really tutorials or anything like that. These are more of a follow along on what I'm doing. So hopefully I'm not disappointing anybody that I'm not doing tutorials. Anything that's really detailed, I might, I might go into detail on. And I have off and on. Probably when I take the springs out, I'll go step by step. Because that's a pretty important step and uh, it can be very dangerous if you've never done it before. So anyway, I'll just bring you in close to the battery box just so you'll, you'll see it battery box area and it's pretty typical rusted okay so that'll be the end of episode uh, four like i said and i uh, hope you enjoyed it and thanks a lot for coming along <laughs>